In this video, we're going to take a look at sketch modification tools inside of our 2D sketch environment for Autodesk Inventor. Here I have the sketch modification IPT from our working files directory, and I'm going to start into this environment by double clicking on sketch one. And the tools we're going to focus on are up here on this modify panel. A lot of these commands aren't really utilized inside of Inventor as much as they are utilized inside of a two dimensional drafting system like AutoCAD. Here, we don't use them as often, but it's good to know what they do. So the first one I'm going to use is the copy command. This allows me to copy my geometry, then specify a base point. Here, I'll choose the center of this arc, and then place it in multiple locations. I'll right click and choose continue when I'm done. And that does keep me inside the dialog box in case I wanna do some additional copying. You can also copy it to the clipboard, so you can copy it from one file to another. You can use precise input if you want to use exact movement locations, or you can also optimize for single selection so you don't have to come up here and choose these boxes all the time. Here I'll choose done. You'll notice that it copied the geometry and the dimensions, but not its location because these have their own unique location control. Next up, I'm going to do a move. The move command really doesn't do a lot for you if you don't know exactly where you're going to. So if I highlight this geometry to move, select my base point, let's choose right here the center of the arc again, I actually get a message that tells me something rather informative. It tells me that my existing dimensions, namely the 15 and the 17, which are holding its location, are restricting this movement. It's gonna ask me if I would like to relax those dimensions. I'm gonna choose yes, and this allows me to adjust the values around. I can go somewhere else, like right here. However, look at these values. I just made my machinist job a lot harder. So I'd rather just change these values rather than using the move command. A case where this would actually benefit quite well if I choose done here, is if I had a sketch point, so I'm gonna use my point tool here on my create panel. Let's say it's over here somewhere. Maybe this is a referenced point from some other model that lays on top of this plate. And I need to make sure that this center point here lines up on this, even though the values may not be that nice. I'll choose move again. Highlight my geometry, select my base point, relax my dimensions by choosing yes. And now I can go directly to that point and I don't have to mess around with trying to get exactly the right value on my dimensions. So there I'll choose done. Next, we'll look at rotate. We'll go up here to this one to rotate. I'll highlight my geometry, choose my center point for rotation, namely the center point again. This time I get messages about my constraints are gonna to have to be broken or removed because I have a horizontal constraint on this line that's gonna to have to be removed so I can rotate this geometry. Well, yes, I'm gonna to have to do that. So now I can rotate this, I can specify the angle here. If I expand my chevrons, I can actually control how often I see those prompting messages. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this and done. Next up, we have our scale command. The scale command, again, is not something you're gonna use a whole lot, but what it allows you to do is select your geometry, your base point, and then a scale factor that you wanna scale it up or scale it down. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and relax those dimensions. I'm gonna scale this up a value of 1.25. So I made it 1.25 times larger than what it was. Again, I could've came in here and changed the values if I wanted to, that would've been just as easy. We also have a stretch option. So with this one, we can draw a crossing window for stretching. And it has to be a crossing window. I can't tell you that enough. Even though you won't use this command that much, just remember that it has to be a crossing window. And then your base point, choose here again. I'm gonna have to relax my dimensions and break my constraints. And now I can stretch this in all kinds of fun, crazy ways. I'll choose done there. Next up, we'll look at offset. The offset command allows you to offset a single line or an entire loop of geometry. In this case, the single line option is currently selected. If I right click, I can turn on the loop select option. Now this allows me to offset the entire loop out or in. In this case, I'm gonna go out. Now it doesn't prompt me for the value. You actually have to put the dimension on afterwards for how much you want it to be offset by. So I just grab my general dimension command. Let's do offset again. This time, I'll turn off loop select, pick on these two lines, right click and choose continue, and now that allows me to offset just those two lines. 
right click and choose OK. Next, we'll do another offset, this time turning off a different option called the Constrained Offset. I turn Loop Select back on, and I'm going to turn Constrained Offset off. I'm going to go ahead and offset this in. Now the difference here is a non-constrained offset allows you to adjust individual parts of this without having to have the entire difference around that be uniform. So where this one was 3.5, that's going to continue all the way around. I can't adjust the top line or the side lines. It's always 3.5. This one here can actually be its own values. Next up, we'll look at the split command. And to do this, I'm going to create a line that just goes through here. The split command allows you to break a line at a specified point. So here, if I click right now, it's going to break the vertical line at that red X location. If I click here, it's going to break that angled line at that red X location. So it depends which one you want to break that you click on. So I'll go ahead and select here. That's broken that line into two separate items. Over here, I'll select this one and right click and choose OK. And you can see I have this line, this line, this line, and this line. So it's all been broken into different pieces. Next up, we'll take a look at trim and extend. So let me create a few more lines here. Let's go through it this way. Hit enter. If you hit enter again, it restarts your line command. I'll go through here. Right click and OK. Trim and extend are very easy to understand. We'll start with extend. If I click on this line here, it extends it up to the next available reference that it can find. Now, if I click it again, it's actually going to go all the way to that circle reference there. If I click it again, it goes to the next one, so on and so forth until I stop clicking. If I do a trim, same thing. It's going to trim it to the next available reference that it finds. I'll right click and choose OK.